Today, propping up the banks, one rule for them, one rule for us. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, I just post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. I warn you, this is a rant today because I think there is an issue that we need to discuss and to understand its full significance on Australian banks and households and businesses. And it relates specifically to what's called the term funding facility. Now, the term funding facility was a facility provided by the RBA to our large banks. And in fact, in the RBA release A03, the term funding facility that is sitting at 187.7 billion, in fact, it grew to the end of June and it's now frozen for three years at very cheap rates. But the other interesting thing is that the banks have parked $357.2 billion back at the RBA on what's called reverse repos. So let's be clear, shall we? The banks have got very, very cheap funding from the Reserve Bank, but then parked a lot of money back, not much more than the term funding facility back. And we also know that based on recent results, they are going to be talking about share buybacks and handing more money back to shareholders. So the question is, is this term funding facility actually connected with the profitability of the banks? The short answer is absolutely it is. Now, the RBA provided this chart, which shows that the term funding facility rate, which was initially 0.25%, dropped to 0.1% last December. And that shows you that the rate at which the banks are getting funding from the RBA is at 0.1%. Now, a 0.1% mortgage would be pretty good, wouldn't it? But no, of course, we're paying 2 or 3% generally for mortgage funds or even more, depending on your particular credit position. So the RBA is providing really cheap funds to our major banks. Which takes me then to the CBA results this last week. They reported that the 30th of June 21, CBA accessed $51.1 billion of funding provided through the RBA's three-year term funding facility, the TFF. The average tenor of the long-term wholesale funding portfolio was 5.1 years, or 6.4 years excluding the TFF, because it's three-year money, of course, at 0.1%. As a result of that, what it means is that they've increased the term funding facility to 51.1 billion, and they've dropped their deposit funding slightly, and dropped their short-term funding significantly, because that's more expensive money. But they've got more long-term funding, including the TFF, 74% is actually long-term funding. Now, what they said was debt issuance it decreased $40 billion to $103 billion. That's a 28% decrease in the prior year, reflecting lower wholesale funding requirements due to growth in customer deposit funding and additional drawdowns of the RBA's term funding facility. Deposits satisfied the majority of the bank's funding requirements. However, strong access was maintained to both domestic and international wholesale debt markets. Now, let's just be clear about that. What we're saying is that the banks have had to issue less debt on the international financial markets, which costs them more money because they've been supported by the really cheap money from the Reserve Bank through the term funding facility. That enhances their profitability. And this is just a quick breakdown that shows that 29% of long-term funding at CBA is term funding facilities. Then you've got senior bonds and covered bonds and a couple of other elements there too, as well as short-term funding. And in terms of portfolio mix, short-term funding is at 26%, the term funding facility is 21%, and long-term funding is 53%. Now let's look at the group margin. This is where the rubber hits the road. So back in financial year 20, the group margin was 207 basis points. It dropped by four basis points to 203. But Look at this. Drawdown of the TFF added four basis points through the year. In other words, the cheap money provided through the term funding facility bolstered their margin. That margin translates directly into higher profitability. So there's a clear correlation between the term funding facility 
and profitability improvement. Now, I had a chat with David Taylor at the ABC earlier in the week about this, and he actually wrote a pretty good article entitled How the Commonwealth Bank Made Nearly $9 Billion in a Pandemic Year with the RBA's Help. And what I want to do is to take you through his article and highlight a couple of key issues which, to be honest, I think that some of the banking analysts have missed. My point is that we should be asking some hard questions about the term funding facility and specifically what its purpose is and what it means in terms of the relative profitability of the banks. Because, frankly, at the moment, it seems to me that the last people who need more help from government or from the RBA are the big banks. This is what David Taylor wrote. Economic policy stimulus is crucial to keeping the nation's economy afloat. Without it, any COVID-19 induced recessions run the risk of being deeper and longer. The Reserve Bank's response gave the big banks access to extraordinarily cheap funds to both support their lending books and to encourage them to lend the money out and support other businesses in the economy. But the question is, do Australia's major banks still need that support, especially when the Commonwealth Bank this week reported a profit of $8.84 billion, up 19.7% for the year. And importantly, is the Reserve Bank's COVID-19 policy response actually now boosting the bank's bottom line? The banks access this cheap money through the Reserve Bank's term funding facility, the TFF, which, just like record low interest rates, is designed to support economic activity. From March last year, it offered hundreds of billions of dollars of funding at a rate of 0.25%, over a fixed three-year term to authorise deposit-taking institutions. As the COVID-19 economic crisis deepened, the interest rate was dropped to 0.1%. The TFF provides a source of low-cost funding for the banking system, with funding available for three-year terms, the Reserve Bank announced. It was a crisis measure, providing extremely cheap funds to the big banks. Participants can draw down their additional and supplementary allowances until the end of June 2021. The RBA noted, unsurprisingly, the banks have drawn on the funds. The uptake was slow initially, but the Commonwealth Bank, Australia's biggest lender, has made use of tens of billions of dollars within the facility. As at the 30th of June, the Commonwealth Bank has drawn $51 billion worth. Over the same period, it drew on $60 billion in customer deposits. To be clear, the Commonwealth Bank is perfectly entitled to these funds, but analysts like Velocity Trade banking analyst Brett Lemezura pointed out that the policy measure has morphed from supporting the bank in trying times to boosting the bank's bottom line. The problem for the Commonwealth Bank profit increase from the first half to the second half of its financial year is that the net interest margin increased by three basis points, Lemezura said. Basically, that means the bank made money on the difference between the cost of funding and the revenue it received from loans made possible by that funding. The difference was made possible by the ultra-cheap funds provided by the Reserve Bank. Lemezura says Lemezura said the Reserve Bank's contribution is one of the reasons, but not the main reason, for the profit jump. One of the reasons deposit rates fell was because funding was cheaper and a contributing factor was the term funding facility from the RBA, but it probably wasn't the major factor, Measurer points out. And he also points out that globally, deposit costs for banks have fallen significantly. Now, let me just make the point that I think Le Mesurier is understating the significant impact of the term funding facility. That very cheap money has really allowed the CBA to access debt markets less frequently, and that means that they're having to pay less than they would otherwise. So there is a direct correlation. And the CBA also released significant provisions from previously when they were expecting the downturn to be more significant. So yes, it's not the only reason, but for me, the TFF is a very significant factor. The CBA would not provide comment to the ABC, but it made clear that its bottom line was not boosted by the cheap funds made available by the Reserve Bank. Rhubarb. Look at it. They reported it. Four basis points over the year. It's clear in the report. Rather, the TFF has allowed the bank to support customers, households and businesses with competitive interest rates on loans. Now, that's not true because we know that there are lots of small businesses who cannot get funding at the moment. Of course, CBA is very happy to make cheap loans available to mortgage holders, and that's supporting house prices. But they are being quite flexible with the truth, in my view. 
It argues that the Reserve Bank has helped it reduce costs as it tried to offer the lowest possible variable and fixed rate loans. So what's the Reserve Bank's view on all of this? Well, the ABC asks the Reserve Bank a straightforward question. Is it fair to say the Reserve Bank has boosted the CBA's full year profit through its term funding facility? And the RBA pointed the ABC to the chart that I showed earlier and said that we need to draw our own conclusions about linking that, the gap in the lines showing the bank's funding rates are lower than they would have been without the TFF to CBA's profit. One conclusion is the bank's earnings would be lower without the Reserve Bank's stimulus measures. The bank has also used its extra cash to distribute $4 billion to shareholders. And a question that David leaves us with is, is that fair? He says, I guess it depends on who you ask. But my view is this. This is clearly a case where the term funding facility has directly supported profits to one of our biggest lenders. 51 billion out of a total facility of 200 billion is what they accessed. That's a big number. And it had a four basis point improvement on the profitability of the business over the last year, which translated directly to higher profits coming out the back of the engine. And that means, of course, that not only can they pay handsome dividends, but they can also do the share buybacks that they announced. Now, I have to say, I'm very unimpressed with CBA's half story and with the RBA's half answer. And the truth is that the term funding facility has directly supported the profitability of our major banks. And I want you to consider this. What would happen if that money had been invested more directly in Australian businesses and Australians rather than just flowing back to shareholders? Well, that would have had a completely different and more radical impact on our current economic predicament. The problem I have is that the Reserve Bank and the government are absolutely aligned to supporting our big banks. And at every conceivable opportunity, the big banks get a bit more help. So, for example, APRA recently gave them capital relief on loans that might be temporarily suspended because of COVID. But... This is not necessarily good use of funds and not necessarily good policy, in my view. There has to be a different story here. At the moment, it's one rule for the big banks and it's another rule for everybody else, those struggling with not enough income to pay the bills or the mortgages and with more lockdowns. This is a policy error. OK, round over. Carry on. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again another time.